Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jimmy and you're watching Jim Rolls. Today we're going to manage the cables, not just over here. I'm just going to show you general cable management for my garage. I have already given majority of the wires behind the monitor. They're still in a mess. I'll just like jumble them up and put them back. The Sonnet Breakaway Plug, which allows me to render things faster in Adobe Premiere or allows me to connect four monitors to my laptop. That's still sitting on my workshop, so I'm gonna try and hide that in a way where I don't see these wires and I just see one wire going into my laptop. Obviously, for my luminary clock, I'm going to have a wire showing, that's fine, but at least we don't see this mess and all of this looks more clean. First, so we're going to start, we're going to remove the TV and I'm going to put a list of things we're going to need in the description below. So let's remove the TV. Now that we removed the TV, we have two options of hiding the cable. One, is if it was my living room, I would use option one, and that is make a hole here, make a hole underneath, run the cables through that hole from behind the wall, take them out from the bottom, put face plates like this, so the cables go in and come out behind the wall, and then there's another one like this, so the cable goes comes out like this. That is an option, but for an inch and a half of cables uh, that we need to hide, because the TV comes all the way to here. So there's an inch and a half that we see three cables hanging. For that, making two holes in the walls, I don't find it absolutely necessary and worth it. Moreover, there is another problem. We've got a horizontal stud, or what some people call it, a fire block that goes over here and that goes from the wall to this wall. Now in order for me to use this, I would make a hole here, put the wires in, it would stick to the fire block, it won't go any further down. So then through that hole or making a separate hole, I'd have to drill a hole into the fire block so that I could channel the wires through that and then make another hole. So I'm kind of like many holes. And for an inch and a half of hiding wires, I don't find it worth it. So the second and the easy option is hiding wires without using holes. What we've got is this thing. It's a covering kit for the ports. Now we've got a big one, so we could put like six, seven wires through them. But the best part is this thing, it can be painted. So it won't look white. Once I put it on, I still do have the spray paint. So if I paint it, it won't be blue. So let's see how to do this. It's a big one, I can probably cut it up and use it as a different location. So let me open this up and see what we have in here. It says that it has the anchors and the screws come free burns with the holes and the two pieces. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure how long we need to take and I think about 12 inches should be long enough. We put this together. Now I'm going to mark 12 inches on this. We're going to use a hacksaw to cut it. This is my hacksaw. I'll just add a little bit. Now we're going to open this again. Okay. There are two holes here. It came with all the hardware. Screw it in. Second screw. Now we're going to attach the TV first and then we will put the wire through this. Now we're going to use the front channel to each wire right here. The cable is proper for the most part right now. 
what we're now going to do is paint this thing. Someone did ask me what color I painted my walls yesterday on one of the comments in one of my videos. When I went to buy the paint for my walls, I didn't really have something in mind. I just literally went there, said I wanted a neutral gray, and then he showed me a few shades and I picked one. But for those people who really wanted to know what color I painted my walls, there's a sticker. It's called Aluminum Sky, and it says a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of this and put it up. But for now, I'm going to take a small brush, mix this color up with a little leftover. It's a bit too small of a brush, I understand, but I did not have any big brushes at the moment. I'm doing it in the garden because it's just a quick something. I did not want to like kind of put plaster on the floor and do everything. I'm gonna leave it to dry out here for a while. While the power for this dries up, we're gonna find the solution for this sauna breakaway. The solution actually came from sauna itself. It, it was originally meant for one to mount the sauna behind the monitor. But since we have the monitors mounted to the extendable arm, we cannot use the waste amount to mount this thing. Well, let me show you this to understand. So originally the waste amount, this you see is the same pattern as the waste amount. So you put the hook in here and then you mount it behind the monitor with these holes and it sticks behind the monitor. But in this case, since we have the extendable arm mounted to the waste amount, we cannot mount this there. We have another technique and it's not something that I've invented. It says in the manual itself, on doing this, using cable ties to mount this mount onto the extendable arm. So we're going to do that. Let's unplug everything. Now we can disconnect it. And this is the hook. In the hardware, they've given us cable ties as well. So I'm just going to use that. I don't know why they've given us a random display. Here. They have given us these four screws and four mounts to make space for a cable tie. That's so absolutely amazing. So the way this works is, on the outer ones, you put the ends, and you basically can do this, right, like so. And then they've provided us with a knot, a knot on. I don't know if this is a good beauty part, but let me show you another one. This is the mount, right up here. Put the bolt from underneath, like right, so, and then just put the knot on top. We're going to do four of these because we're going to put two cable ties. This is how it looks, and uh, I'm going to tighten it up. So I'm going to tighten this up. I'm doing it in a very odd way because I don't want to live with these guys. Just keeping up the best perspective. Now the cable that goes through here. And you do all four sides. Three done. Three done. And all four are done. Now let's try and then put the foot in just to see how it all fits. I believe you could put it either this way or this way. I'm gonna put it this way so that it looks more top. The problem with this is this thing strips right off. There's a rubber bushing inside to protect the foot. Uh, not to scratch it, but it seems pretty useless because it kind of strips right away. So I don't like it so. I think this is brilliant. And then the cable tie goes right in here. And another one goes right in here. And then this should mount behind the arm. This is actually way better than I thought it would be. This was pretty sturdy. Like, wow. Impressive. Let's try in. But before we do that, let's try and manage this cabling a little bit better. So nothing is visible. These things come very handy.
this is the HDMI from the TV that we routed. And this mammoth of a slab, uh, we're just going to try and hide it up here. So it's just going to sit up here, like so. Now we will tidy everything up, but before that, let's put that in the cover. So I should be very straightforward to install and just snap it in. Like so, snaps right in. And you barely can tell the color difference. Now these strings are on my mount. I don't know if your mount would have it or not. Um, you pull this to detach the TV from the rear mount. I'm going to tape it and hide it. I'm not even using an electrical tape. I'm just using a normal toilet tape. I'm going to light it pretty good, but it does the job. Now, you'll know how to, what wires are handy, you can get in once to put these TVs back into place. So, let me put this back into place. This looks way more clean. Now, we have three wires that we have over here. One is one that goes into the blue screen clock. The other one is that one goes into my laptop through the sign breakaway clip. And the third one is for my Amazon Alexa behind over here. You are 0.14 miles, 0.22 kilometers, south of the center of Wayne, California. Thank you, but I did not really need you, I was just referring to you. Anyway, so, but it still looks a lot more clean the way we would like it. So um, I'm quite happy with this. I also want to show you my slat wall hooks. I've just got the hooks. I've not hung everything up, but whatever I've done, I just wanted to show you because I'm really, really pleasantly surprised with my slat wall hooks. We order these slat wall hooks. All we use is a magnet strip. You can put your wrenches or your screwdrivers on there. You can hang things on these hooks. They're really easy to take out and put in, but once they're put in, it'll take some weight before it'll come down. I've got a couple of magnets over here, there's a hammer, hollow. Over here, we've got a couple of baskets, small four baskets. I've got my cable clips in there. And then if you want to put some hose or if you put these slat walls on the wall, like just the slat wall, and you have this, you could probably you would put a bike on it, like a bike rack for the wall, right? So you can hang a bicycle on it. I'm very happy with them. I tried getting some cheap hooks and trays from other companies for these slat walls, but I believe the, the hooks that are made for that particular slat wall work the best. So if you buy these new age products, slat walls, make sure you buy the new age product hooks and uh, um, trays. There are three different kits for hooks or three different combos for hooks. Um, I do believe that they should let us pick and choose what hooks we want rather than having three combos. If I had to buy more hooks, I just keep buying the smallest combo. Like I, instead of buying the bigger combo, I buy like two or three of the smallest combo. Because in the bigger combo, there are some things that I don't need or will never need, right? So check the three combos out yeah, on the website. I'm gonna attach the links below. We have our drill station here. We got a printer here, which is wireless uh, for the In the whole house, if I press print anywhere, it will print over here in the garage. Well, it's a wireless printer, so. Um, but this is the drill station. I'm gonna have charging up here that brings for these drills and there's a slot for the cable on this side so i'm going to channel the cable down i could channel it down on this side as well but i mean if there is a slot here the plug extension would not move so i'm just going to do it on this side it's very easy very simple i'm just going to use some 
cable clips, hammer it in. This project has been signed here. Now I'm going to put this cable in. Simply put the cable in. And if you remember from our previous video, we have uh, plug sockets and the uh, faucet. So this should work out perfect. Next, we're going to now skip phase three and take phase four first. If you remember and if you've been following the channel, you would know that phase four was my flooring. It's not fixed yet, but we're deciding on what flooring to get and my next video will be on that. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe for more such videos and do give us a thumbs up. With Christmas right around the corner, if you haven't shopped gifts for your near and dear ones, then don't forget to check out my video on gifts for car bag, gift ideas for car bag. There are about 50 ideas in that video, so I'll link that's to the description below as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. See you later. Ciao.